Okay, let's talk about how to become a doctor in the U.S. as a Filipino medical graduate. Well, you've probably seen a version of this list on how to become a doctor in the Philippines. It will tell you the general steps you need to take on how many years you need to spend and studying is hard, life is hard. Anyway, you don't need to finish all these steps through fellowship because the good thing about becoming a doctor in the Philippines is, is that after you pass the physician board exam and register for a license, you can now practice medicine on your own. Maybe I will make a video about this in the future. Now, if you are considering on becoming a doctor in the U.S. as a Filipino medical graduate, you basically need to take the same general steps, but the difference is even if you pass the U.S. board exams, you are still not allowed to practice medicine on your own. You will be required to finish at least a three-year residency program and various other certifications before you get your own license to practice. And it is important to point out that residency slots are limited. You are basically competing for those limited slots with everyone else who also wants to become a doctor in the U.S., including U.S. medical graduates which have their own inherent advantages. It makes sense because as a U.S. residency program, you will often prefer U.S. medical graduates. But don't let that stop you. As one of my mentors said, U.S. is big naman eh. The good thing is you are not required to undergo the mandatory one-year internship in the Philippines that is required for you to be allowed to take the PLE because the internship year in the U.S. is already included in their residency years. So this video is ideal for the people in the Philippines who are at the very least currently enrolled in a medical school and have successfully completed their first two years of medical school. Why? Because that is one of the eligibility requirements for you to be allowed to take the U.S. board exams. Speaking of U.S. board exams, the reason I tried to get this video out as soon as possible is because the U.S. MLE, the U.S. board exams, have announced starting January 2022 that their Step 1 exam score reporting will be changed from a 3-digit score to a pass or fail. And that is not good news for most non-US medical graduates because as I mentioned earlier, you are competing for residency slots. When the Step 1 becomes pass or fail, you, as a foreign medical graduate, are now losing one of the parameters that could help you differentiate yourself from other applicants. Instead of you being able to show objectively that you are better at test taking by scoring high on step 1, you will now be categorized as just pass, just like everyone else who pass. Basically, what I am trying to say is that if you are considering on becoming a doctor in the US, you must decide right now. Okay, so what you should do first? Well, this is the general overview of the process of applying to become a doctor in the US. You are going to need a lot of prep time, so let's start there. As I mentioned earlier, you need to finish at least the first two years of medical school before you are allowed to take the step exams. Then you need to check program-specific requirements, like what else will you need if you want to go to a medical versus a surgical field. There are other considerations like which state you want to live in, visa requirements, but you have to look that on your own. There are many benefits of becoming a doctor in the US and becoming a doctor in general, but we also have to point out the cost it will take before you can avail those theoretical benefits. The biggest hurdle to most people is the financial cost. Medical school is expensive, application is expensive, everything is expensive, but there is also physical, mental, and emotional cost. All those missed social events like weddings or vacations or holidays or on duty, career opportunities that you have to turn down because you already have a full schedule, and you have to consider the FOMO of seeing your childhood friends posting their second kid on social media, maybe buying houses and cars and building awesome gaming rigs and whatever while you are sitting here still broke and studying for your second step exam. If that does not deter you from actually pursuing career in U.S. healthcare, then you may proceed to check whether or not your medical school is eligible to sponsor you to become a U.S. MD. Go to World Directory of Medical School, click search and look for your country, in our case the Philippines, type your medical school, O-U-E-R-M, medical, you will see details about your medical school. Go to sponsors notes and scroll down to see students and graduates of this medical school are eligible to apply for ECFMG certification. So what is this ECFMG thing? Educational Commission for Foreign Medical Graduates is the body that would facilitate your certification so that you will be allowed to practice medicine in the U.S. as a foreign medical graduate. This is where you register your step exams among other things. You will be needing your passport, medical school documents, and you will also need to pay registration fees. So go to their website, click on online services, go to EWA, and this is where you register and get your ECFMG ID number. So you've decided, prepared, and registered for your exams. Now you go study. USMLE Step 1 covers basic sciences from your first two years of medical school. USMLE Step 2 Clinical Knowledge is specifically designed to test what you know from your third and fourth year. You need to pass both steps before you can apply for ECFMG certification. There is a step 3, don't worry about that yet, but make sure you look it up along the way while you're at it. 
Going back to ECFMG certification, there are several pathways 1 to 6. For details about this, please research it on your own. While getting ECFMG certified, you can buy ERAS token and register for Electronic Residency Application Services where you will upload your requirements and credentials so you can apply for residency. This is just the most basic list of the requirements. Some programs may require more from you, some programs may require less. You have to get in touch with the programs you want to apply so you will know exactly what documents they want to see. Important dates, ERAS token becomes available around June of every year. July to August is a good time for you to research on the programs you would like to apply to. I suggest looking at Freda website and there are residency fairs around these times. You can participate and know more about the programs you find interesting. September is application season, so all documents and other requirements ideally must be submitted because by October to January, it's interview season. Then you have to rank programs that interviewed you because that means you are qualified for their slot. And if they rank you back, you will find out around March. Congratulations, you match! You can now start residency in the US on July. For the sake of transparency, I started contemplating on seriously pursuing USMD around September 2020 because that is the year when the physician licensure exam in the Philippines got postponed. So instead of waiting for the Philippine government's announcement when will they allow us to take our purge, I decided that I should just prepare for USMLE Step 1. So I registered for ECFMG on October, took my Step 1 exam on January 2021, PLE on March, OAT on June, Step 2 CK supposedly this August, but due to community quarantine again in the Philippines, I don't know when will I be able to take my Step 2 CK exam. Anyway, that's it. That is just a very rough overview and I left out so many details. If you're considering on becoming a doctor in the US as a Filipino medical graduate, you should decide now or at the very least the next few days because again, step 1 exam will become pass or fail next year. And it's surely a nerf to most non-US medical graduates. Talk to your friends, family, significant other, ask for more information from your medical school. I think most big medical schools have organizations dedicated in supporting their students through this whole USMD thing. So I think you should get in touch with them. Get in touch with your mentors, get in touch with your seniors, your colleagues. Most people are helpful, so don't be afraid to ask. That's it. Good luck to you, good luck to me, good luck and have fun. Mm -hmm.